I will start by uh, maybe a, a very briefly introducing myself. Actually, I was also a student here um, many years ago. I did my uh, PhD study here on the, in the CS department, and then I moved overseas uh, for a while. I think after I think 2006, I moved overseas, and uh, it just come back a few years ago, 2018. So here I am. Um, but I'm in a different uh, building, <laughs> so you see building, but not too far away. I, I feel I, I actually my part of my heart is actually attached to here. I still remember like I was in downstairs in the basement, right? As a graduate student um, doing my work. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, many years. Um, and uh, I should come here more maybe. I hope this, this won't work. Uh, I, I press the wrong button. Okay, maybe it works. So I, I want to uh, a <clears throat> couple of our uh, recent uh, research, uh, mostly uh, done by when we uh, and, uh, you know start our lab and uh, about two years, five years ago. And uh, uh, but what I show here is a bit more of uh, the more recent research. Somehow it's a set of camera. I don't know. Let's just uh, give it a try. Sorry, uh, I think we're mold. I'll just share another screen. Oh, another screen. What do you do? Uh, what should I do? Uh, stop sharing? No, I'm not going to. Stop sharing, maybe. What are you saying? You know what? Why not? I just share this one. <laughs> is, is that okay with um, everyone? You could just, just share it. If you start it, and you go, I just share it. Time for it. But you also can just put the button over there where Sorry, you can go to the other mode. But I, I don't like Microsoft. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I use PowerPoint, but let's do this way, okay? I just okay. just share it, but make a life easier. Um. So. So yeah, I should go the other page. Um. Um. Yeah, my, my computer is slow. I should uh, <laughs> buy a new one. Okay, so uh, we do uh, we generate the uh, whole fake human emotions. Yes, yes. Um, I guess we need to understand what are human emotions in order to fix them uh, well. Also, we do a uh, uh, so called motion capture just to uh, extract 3D uh, body shape from 2D images. And we can multiple of those uh, cameras and images they are taken. I will use uh, some novel cameras. I'll talk about that um, uh, here in one hour, uh, I, I, I think. Also, we will uh, score the human emotions. Now, if you think of uh, industrial setting like the construction workers, uh, we can help to provide some hopefully objective, consistent uh, uh, you know, uh, scoring of whether a, a, a motion of a sequence of uh, Operations, human operations, interactions with objects are safe or not. But uh, broadly, uh, more specifically, we, we can look at, uh, for example, uh, sports activities and where uh, we also give sports and uh, other things. So, I, I will, uh, in this talk, I will uh, spend more time focus on, I think, these three. And uh, we also do other things in the back, but uh, yeah, maybe next time. Talk about it. Um, yeah, the other thing I want to mention is um, after four years, so my 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 uh, uh, graduate student, PhD students in, in in my group, I uh, start to uh, graduate, and uh, one month later, you'll hear uh, one of them uh, actually is will be my second student in our group to graduate. We'll talk mostly about in the same place here. Okay, but. Not tomorrow, not today, not next week, but uh, one month roughly from now. Uh, you happen to be here, you hope. Uh, you know, he will present in more detail this part, but this I will just give you a hopefully an overview so to warm up a little bit. Uh, view on that. So let's, uh, let's talk about uh, what we do. Um, we model 3D human body shape using this uh, skeletal model, uh, which we call the uh, uh, in jargon called the uh, articulated objects. Um, so this is bad hat, no, legs. Uh, they are called quadrupeds, uh, animals, you know, dogs, and cats, and so on. 
uh, others are caught and so on. So, so those are all articulated objects, which is, uh, should I also uh, start with a uh, uh, rigid body object, which are, think of an uh, individual form of this articulated object, that is the rigid body. For example, look at my, this, this thing here, right? Uh, laser pointer, this peak uh, shape. So it, it, it's just the one piece, you know, why the move in 3D space, it can be characterized uh, if you just uh, consider it uh, ideally as a point, you know, in 3D space with its orientation, right? Characterized in six numbers, right? 3D, three dimensional location, orientation, and uh, uh, 3D uh, location. So, articulated object is a bit more than that. It has uh, many of those individual components, building blocks, connecting with the Drawing uh, and here, you know, for particularly objects, slightly different from, from the uh, robotics, there are many different types of drawings. But here, mostly like a you know human uh, biomechanics, right? The drawings is uh, kind of uh, maybe easier to work with. Right? They don't slide and so on. It's just uh, bang, you know, rotated, you know, in different angles, different uh, direction, and, and the bone size won't change. You know? So there are quite a few constraints make up this skeleton model. Certainly the one I show here is not precisely the uh, anatomy of a human body. Far from that, it's just a, a, a rough a pause approximation to that. But usually when you look at uh, uh, computer games, you know, simulations, 3D simulation, et cetera, even you do VR, you know, stuff you put on the goggle. Uh, the underlying, you know, 3D uh, virtual characters, uh, you know, shape dynamics is driven by something like this, okay? It, it's not, you know, not really a fully uh, replica of human anatomy, so, um, yeah, so that's our current, uh, and that's what also we do, okay? <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit about, uh, since I also mentioned here, uh, we call it a theory, but uh, uh, it's just uh, one of the ways to represent um, the, the location of the joints, or other words, the you know the poles of this uh, skeletal model, human body poles represented in this uh, skeletal or stick model, we, we use uh, this this way of okay, theory rather than this uh, three D coordinates, uh, which by by the wording, I mean, just uh, you know three D location of each and every joints. Um, I will. Uh, Use this slide to explain a bit uh, what's the difference. I think it can be played, hopefully. <clears throat> is um, um, by using this um, articulated object uh, representation, essentially what's um, uh, underpinning is the rotation and the translation transformations in 3D. Okay. <clears throat> And of have a sequence of those to drive uh, a, a kinematic chain, right? To to uh, to deform, right? To articulate in the three D space, and that can be characterized at the point. Okay, three D we call the starting three uh, D pose, human body pose, right? Well, in the place you imagine rather than a fish here, you imagine there's a human. Um, body there. Right? Each of the poles correspond to a point in this uh actually it's curved space. And this curved space um uh, detail is um a product product space of those uh, um translation transformation uh matrices um uh in yeah, so 3D space. So each of those we call it it's uh, it's a legal it's called uh but a little bit of into it, okay, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, the 3D, uh, the, the, the Euclidean group, special Euclidean group um, three, okay, SE three, which encode, which is a four by four matrix with a three by three, four by four matrix with a, on the top left corner, a three by three sub matrix representing the rotations in 3D, right? And then we have uh, up to the side, 
write uh, is a three by one column vector of translation. And then the, finally, we have this uh, four by one uh, row vector, right? With uh, the first three elements is just zero. And the final guy, uh, there is one. Okay, the four by four matrix. And it only represents one single um, articulation, you know, of, 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 of a bone, okay? Think of that, right? And then we have a lot of those, right? Speaking together, and mathematically, it's a product space of that. We represent a particular kinematic chain. Let's say start with the base, um, uh, maybe here, the base coordinate, uh, or somewhere else, it could be anywhere, like right? the tree graph, basically. It doesn't matter where we, the root is, right? The root node of the graph. So we can use here, right? That's a base coordinate. Then, you know, we maybe choose this particular path, right? This is just a kinematic chain. How to articulate that? Well, you, you multiply this in this in this order, right? Of a three point here, right? You multiply by the current, you know, as, as I mentioned, the four by four matrix that we call that root three, and with again, with again, each and every one is on its own, right? And this, you get the, the final location, three D location of that uh, joint. And use that to trap the outside um, surface model of the 3D body. By the way, I also want to mention it's actually a, you know, a, like a, a 101 of uh, 3D modeling is we don't do solid body, solid uh, modeling. So our, we call 3D shape, human body shape is not a solid um, model, right? Solid shape, meaning. We don't care about the interior. We only care about the surface. Um, and usually, in the computer graphics uh, pipeline, it's been uh, there for many years now. Um, uh, it's uh, using triangle mesh to represent the surface, and you know, have a lot of those small triangles we call the face, right? And you stick them together, okay, by joining by the um, by the edge, okay, connecting them together to form this triangle mesh, and that's a surface model of a 3D, uh, let's say, um, human body shape. And we don't look inside that, okay? Anything inside, we don't care. Just to make it, uh, make it and, and how to drive that 3D uh, uh, surface model is we use this material, this internal skeletal to drive that, that's called a rigging. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll stop here, I'll move on. <laughs> so, so, so that's that's actually our idea is we essentially what we are dealing with we are dealing with uh, underlying of, of this you know in the, the three D world actually it's embedded in this uh, uh, in this uh, curved space you know, we call manifold where a point corresponds to a particular body posture particular pose and a motion. If we prescribe the start and end pose of the motion, let's say we start with this, so we end with, I don't know, this, then the, the, the motion we interpret, right, could be anything. It's not necessarily to be the, that is the geodesic, which is the, you know, if you have a way to get a shortest path, right, between this start and end point, uh, not necessarily doing that. You can do anything, right? It could be any arbitrary curves. So now I, I think it's clear now the, the task of generating both, uh, you know, synthesizing uh, a 3D human body motion is essentially first identify this uh, curve space with the means I just provide. Secondly, you just draw a curve, right? You, you, you want to generate a curve. And that curve will drive your, your 3D character, right? The surface triangle mesh model I just mentioned uh, to perform. But uh, what curve is good? Um, that's something maybe we need to learn from the data okay. as a later part. But uh, with this tool, actually, we are able to unify many of the uh, the tasks we have uh, used in a computer vision, such as so-called pulse estimation, which is just to identify a particular point or corresponding to a posture. 
of a post of the you know turned uh, from outside. I can and the motion simulation is just on the side, right? Uh, motion simulation is one you want to generate a curve. I can want to follow a pre-existing curve. Um, action recognition is basically you want to, you know, you have a motion sequence. Maybe perhaps you first you segment them, chop them down into individual subsequences, each correspond to a particular, maybe subjectively, a human action path. And then for each of those uh, subsequences, you just give it a name, right? Label them. So all of this actually can be um, understood there as well. Let me see. Ah. So with this preamble, I I I, I start with uh, introducing uh, uh, one the first of the three projects uh, given the time. Okay. I may uh, spend more time on the first two, maybe and less on the final one. Uh, and uh, I also want to mention this work is uh, uh, done by by Chuan, who is a senior student for in his uh, fourth year. One and a half, four, 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 and four, four and five, sorry. Um, and he, he's about to graduate. So his work is mostly to generate or synthesize 3D human motions. Uh, and it's already a conditional uh, generation. So either condition on, let's say, a known uh, prescribed action category, we have maybe a bunch of those, um, or uh, it's kind of like a ChatGPT, you provide a, as input a, a text prompt. A test command of what kind of you know motion you intend for, right? And then to generate accordingly okay, uh, the three different motions. So that's uh, basically uh, what he will do. Um, so the first goal, uh, let's start from. So basically, what I'm talking here is in the natural um, timeline of science physics. Okay. <laughs> We started first, he started first by working on this problem, okay? Um, where the idea, the, the problem we are setting is, and by the way, we are among the first to do this. We are setting is to, uh, let's say, what about the generated human motion based on some known motion categories, action categories, let's say walk, uh, jump, and, and so on, right? Um, well, those are just uh, from uh, human, um, like say English, right? The human uh, subjective uh, uh, wording of this, right? Human concept. But then we, we try to learn this. A diversity, you know, could be very, uh, you know, a diverse um, set of human motions under a, a big back, uh, you know, a particular action category name. But we, we want to, to learn it uh, in the sense that uh, it, it's natural, uh, which is uh, kind of follow the real human motion. And it's diverse in the sense um, it can, you know, cannot just uh, do it uh, deterministically, right? It, it, it doesn't make sense. The human motion doesn't do that. We want to generate uh, human motions to cover different, uh, uh, let's say, styles, um, um, uh, emotions, and so on, so on, right? And like a old elderly, elder lady versus a, a young uh, boy, you know, a diverse set of uh, human motions, and also. Uh, this is a little bit of uh, graphics we want to uh, uh, attach to uh, uh, images, which is actually our heart is in, right? So we want to do this also with uh, input images. We want to generate also to the videos, etc. I won't spend a lot of time uh, discussing uh, diving into the model itself, but I know uh, you you may <laughs> maybe more interested in in this part. But rather, I think given the time and uh, what I want to uh, cover, I will a uh, bit more emphasized in the uh, result part. But I, I leave this, actually, I will leave it to uh, Chuan, who will come again, uh, you know, uh, himself um, uh, one, one month later, and I'm sure he will talk more about this. So, so I'll, you know, keep that in mind. And, uh, but I want to say the following. So in our, uh, in, in his work, basically what, <clears throat> The key uh, um, idea is rather than generating a you know deterministically generating a motion sequence, like a, you gave as an input, a motion category here yeah, use A to denote. Oh, sorry, I'm not A. Actually, C to denote. Uh, the output actually is rather an empirical 
distribution of motions. Then what we do is we draw sample from that empirical distribution. Think of a histogram, okay? One dimensional, right? Uh, but here certainly it's more than one dimension. But then we make a random draw and that is the produced motion. And this way our model is uh, stochastic by nature, right? And, and in a sense, by just uh, sampling from this learned distribution, or should I say inference distribution, right? Uh, I, I just uh, take it back, maybe learn because we have prescribed the uh, action kind we, we know, uh, even in training. Um, then basically, uh, we, we, we hope we can cover this part. So it's not a deterministic uh, algorithm or method, right? It, it's a, 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 a stochastic uh, modeling approach. Okay, so some fun stuff. For example, we have, I don't know why, but the show. So we have those uh, uh, motion sequences, those inside the red box are uh, real ones, outside are fake ones uh, generated by our model. So just give a feel of, um, I believe in my eye, uh, they are very similar, very close. Um, Question. Yes. How did you actually evaluate your tool? Was it by your by your impression or was yeah. it? They are not explanation of ways. Yeah, they're still not set, fully settled, but I will show later oh. the quantitative. So here is more visual. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. Very, and you did it objectively. Uh, also including the study, but we also have a tabular uh, with number of that uh, result. <clears throat> um, see down. So why is uh, okay? So. And also, uh, the generative motions usually are short. You know, walk, you cannot walk for uh, maybe uh, 10 minutes, right? Just walk for maybe uh, uh, five seconds, I'd say. But uh, one way we are thinking how to extend this is to, uh, to uh, uh, you know, to have uh, uh, basically uh, attach them, right, one by one. Um, and then we need to resolve this issue of uh, in between uh, when we have uh, two different. Uh, action categories and in the transition moment, you know, somehow we, we don't want it to be a very abrupt right? or create a kind of a natural transition. And results are so uh, reasonable. Uh, uh, the reason for it's uh, doing reasonably well is because our model, uh, by the way, I should mention earlier, is a conditional uh, uh, modeling, okay? I forgot to mention, it's actually a VAE, Variational Autoencoder model. Uh, sorry, i come back to here. So it's a, you know, generating distributions, but this distribution model is a Variational Autoencoder, right? And I think with this, I, I don't have to this probabilistic uh, uh, approach where the distribution I mean is that a probabilistic uh, uh, modeling. Uh, I haven't, I don't have formula here to show you. <laughs> but you have to trust me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In trust paper or uh, thesis, there are formula. I think this is well known, right? We very not in order. So, um, and usually we are optimizing uh, by looking at the log, uh, uh, log like we put the bound, right? Um, and to do the uh, variational uh, approximation of that, that bound. Uh, usually, I think it's. Uh, that are uh, 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 upper bound, right? So we want to push it further up, upper bound. Yes. There's a gap between the approximated function, simple function, and the, the real uh, uh, likelihood function. Anyway, so come back to here. <clears throat> uh, so here shows actually uh, uh, several other motion action categories with the generated motions. Uh, I, I think it's reasonably uh, uh, diverse. And the natural in a sense that also the number for each of these categories, uh, you know, this word, uh, we learn uh, it's static, we train a dedicated model for it, right? And, and that inference time, we just uh, sample from that, uh, uh, learn the distribution model. That's what we do. <laughs> oh, I think I've done this. So, right, now we start to work with. Uh, uh, input images. So far, it's just uh, in the air, right? 
the training data are just the uh, motion capture data. I think they're that. Yeah, so um, for the light algebra that we're talking about, do you also get compositionality? Like, can you get, I want to sit and talk at the phone at the same time. So like, can you compose the algebra such that you get to? Uh, yeah, so it, it's um, so human articulation is based on, so the caption, I think it's just weird. I think I was here already. So the caption is, uh, I'm not too sure the Zoom can, can hear your caption. Maybe I rephrase, okay, quickly. Where's the Zoom? So, <laughs> oh, maybe this one. So the caption is about uh, uh, compos uh, composability, right? Uh, for um, a different body parts, they have uh, their different functionality, how we can put them together, and let's say, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, shuffle them uh, once we, we want, right? Uh, it, yeah, I think the the answer is uh, yes, we can do it uh, in a sense that uh, human body articulation, you know, can be categorized as I mentioned as a set of kinematic chains. Uh, you you find a root uh, of you know it's basically it's a tree structure, um, skeletal model, right? It's a tree structure graph where it has its root we call base uh, node, and uh, you also have the leaves, right? Um, <clears throat> In the early example, I show uh, that. So basically, you can consider it's a, a skeletal tree graph, where for each of the chain, which is subgraph of the tree graph, um, you have a kinematic chain, right? So it's a kinematic tree, and you can model those, for example, um, separately, and then separately, and then you can compose them. The other another uh, catch on this is. Um, Human motion is all, also, so far we talk about just kinematics, which means um, the human movements in itself, maybe just uh, in, in the air, right? Without the regard of uh, forces, gravity, friction, you put it into the context on the earth, like move on this surface floor, right? It has its friction uh, coefficient inside of this material, uh, many things, right? So we need to also abide by these physical laws. And this is a, a dynamics of human motion part, which um, uh, in, in this talk I won't talk about. Yeah, about you know the, the guy may fall down yeah, because one leg is doing this, the other one doing that, and cannot balance. One of the situation is you have a sequence of motions, none of the same at the same time. But as you showed a picture, I can jump and then they will sit. Yeah, you can do. Uh, oh, for this example, can I talk on the phone? While I'm sitting down, yeah, that's uh, yeah, thanks, that, yeah, yeah. So that's more about the, I would say, uh, the power of learning. I mean, the, the capacity of the, uh, you know, the, the theory is we can incorporate this, but uh, I think it's more the matter in our learning approach, right? How, how we try to uh, capture or try to you know tackle this uh, com composability. Uh, uh, issue there rather than you know, but modeling in mean, the representation is like quite the ethereal representation of the skeletal uh, model is very capable in that regard. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> so yeah we now we start with uh, as input again with, with the motion category uh 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 uh, uh uh, put on side, we also have another input, which is a single images here. Here I show a few of those uh, possible input images. And by the way, this is fun. <laughs> That's the author of the paper. And uh, this is sent uh, across of the paper. You? Uh, yeah, we should <laughs> next time. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, with uh, also with uh, motion category, uh, action category, sit down, you know. I think this is sit down, sit down, uh, warm up, sit down up, and you'll see they just perform. You know, you can you can pop up a 3D uh, uh, human shape out of the 2D and uh, uh, drive it like perform some motion. But it doesn't know about fabrics and flow. That's the other sort of So yeah, there are many things actually. Um, we don't get to see the you know usually we just get to see the front profile, not the back and the profile. You know. The side view, but then we need to guess. And, and there are also other things, right? So, uh, what's the shape uh, behind this guy? I mean, should that we see another face? 
uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it should have, right? So, you know, those are we, we need to learn, as well as what's the color and you know, the texture of the grass, etc. What's the shape? Uh, many things. So there are some funny stuff when we get to see, uh, when I turn to the side view. So here I show you. Because uh, by nature, it's a 3D motion generation. But then I think we improved uh, ever since, but uh, here I show an earlier version, where you see the guy actually, <laughs> If you look purely from the front, okay, it's quite a good match. Well, from the side, it's, <laughs> it's not that great. Uh, and the back is a bit blurred. Yeah. So it's many, uh, it has room to improve. <clears throat> I like the shadow. Thank you, yeah, that's actually, uh, that's uh, easier, much easier. <laughs> because we just uh, project that. Uh, yeah. okay. So, just to show you, you know, the, the, the generating the 2D videos, uh, this manner is like, have to be consistent, but internally it's 3D. Okay, move on to the second uh, part of uh, transfer work. So since we have this done, you know, results are not bad, but uh, thinking what to do next. And that time we haven't had this uh, ChatGPT stuff yet, okay? I mean, they do their stuff, but we do our own. Um, and just think, of, okay, what about doing this, right? So let's say give a, uh, Input text, can we generate human motions? What about it as a, a natural, you know, uh, <clears throat> um, um, you know, uh, language of uh, uh, English of uh, uh, human motion, right? As, as input, and let it generate some motion and see what how how good it is. So that's actually the idea. And turns out actually it's uh, not that bad. It's actually quite 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 well in sense. I think I can play this. Uh, actually, I don't know. Um, it should start automatically. Uh, people in the Zoom, I'm not so sure if you can see, but I guess I need to, I hate, but I need to press this button. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, okay. I don't know how to control this in PowerPoint slide. Which, should I? Uh, lights like this. So, yeah, okay. push the, um, so what, do, what do you see now? Are you seeing this screen or the old? No, this one. Did you hear the space settings? Yeah. I think I was doing I mean, duplicate the slide. Duplicate, okay. Is that which one? Is that which one? Uh, not for, yeah, maybe. Oh, um, okay. Hopefully it will uh, move. I think it moves, right? No. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. So how come, Russ, you are so smart? <laughs> okay. So uh, uh so um I don't know why it doesn't move. I thought it would move. It moves in my um Sorry, I just want to show this. Um, and move. Uh, so if you put that, here's a triangle. This one? Yeah. Oh, okay. At least I have a button to press. Yeah. Put it down, push buttons. Okay. Now you seen this one or the other one? Yeah. Anyway, you you get to see how it, <laughs> they are moving. So they are moving differently. Okay, that's a that's a, a so, point. Yeah. So maybe we go back and push the uh, duplicate display. Oh, duplicate again. Okay. Uh, where is it? Display side. Yeah. Display side. Duplicate. I, I'll put. I'll press the next one. Okay. I pro promise. Um. Sorry about that. You know what? I, I just jumped. Okay. Oh, it moves now. Wow. So so yeah. Oh. I, I so, uh, yeah. so yeah, that, that's actually what we want to show, right? So given a single input text, uh, you know, it, it had to be this way, right? The two emotions uh, uh quite diverse. Not you know, not the uh, every two motion the same, even for the same guy. It's the move. But yeah, you get a you get the flavor, right? So given this as input, quite complicated in this case. 
actually you should get to see you uh, know uh, a diverse a different dynamic emotions each time we just draw a sample line. And by the way, the duration of the motion sequence is also unknown. So we also need to do the same uh, by at the first time, given this as input, a particular text command as input, first to uh, infer uh, distribution, empirical distribution of the motion sequence of the type, okay, how long that motion sequence will take. Then fix that random sample from that individual distribution, a particular uh, duration, and, and then generate the content, okay, by, by uh, again, infer, uh, you know, from this text, um, empirical distribution and the sample from that with the fixed uh, given now um, duration, time duration. Okay, and then you can correlate that with uh, the real motion. So that's the idea. So I'll just give this, and uh, I will show you later uh, a better, hopefully, uh, demo video. And also, by the way, we um, we compose because we are among the first to do this. Mm -hmm. um, we have to come up with our own, own data set. This is a, a work uh, a few years ago. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, very interesting, uh, you know, idea at that time. Uh, results are not uh, very re realistic in a sense. So, but we want to, uh, you know, to do it. Uh, so then we, we need to construct a good data set. Um, and this is a metro data set containing uh, all different uh, sources of uh, motion capture data from CMU mobile library, from, uh, I think also Mixamo, uh, Adobe. So those are the open source one, as well as our own motion capture uh, data. So it's, uh, the result is about uh, less than uh, 30 hours of human motions. And then we hire um, Amazon mechanical workers, annotate. Sometimes the English is not perfect, <laughs> bear with it. Uh, but that, that's the kind of the size. So usually for one motion capture sequence, motion sequence, usually there are multiple uh, textual descriptions. Okay, so it's uh, not one to one. You will think about it, right? It's, it cannot be one to one. It has to be a many to many. Um, same question earlier. How was it evaluated? I, I will come to that. <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah. I, I just keep promising and I haven't delivered. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we haven't used a uh, you know, large language model in our plan to, but not uh, yet. So we learn uh, basically our own uh, come up uh, uh, various. I think the standard uh, uh, natural language modeling uh, component, um, not our invention, but uh, the majority of things still variational also for that. Okay. At least I you know we also try diffusion models, you, know, you name it, recent ones, and uh, better results. Okay, we'll uh, have some mission uh, undergoing, but not what I present here. Um, and on either side, we, we do this. Uh, Textual motion, uh, you know, so from a given input uh, into the text, we, we, we sample, uh, inter well, infer empirical distribution and we draw sample. And the same thing with just mentioned that. And also, the other thing I want to mention is a motion is performed in a continuous space. Then the other side is a human language with the, um, the words, okay, the sentences are discrete, right? How to align them. So in the end, we discretize everything in a sense that uh, in a sense that uh, the human motions are now um, discretized using this uh, uh, um, I guess I put a whole story of well, factor analysis. Right? So basically discretized into those uh, uh, we call the motion snippet, but it's just an individual codes uh, where each code Snippet code is to encode a very short duration of uh, human motion, substitution. Okay, not a mesh to frame, but mesh to a tiny, teeny uh, motion, some motion, okay? Which is, uh, you can think of that like uh, the brick or the uh, building block you, when you construct a building. Right? That's, a, that's a building block, but discretized. <clears throat> so all the possible motions, running, jumping, 
you name it, so are you know, now building upon this. Okay, now how it works. Ah, this is boring, but uh, start by showing the numbers. <laughs> it's a numbers. Okay, so yeah, uh, which is this paper? So we had a full paper published uh, last year uh, on the, uh, the, the different uh, uh, technical uh, solution, but on the same kind of um, problem, right? The problem, a new problem we want to tackle with. But anyway, we, we adapt some of the CSR results uh, method on related tasks to our task, our problem, and we compare with them, okay? The numbers now, the one I show you is uh, last year, right? And we had the uh, results actually maybe one or two years, two years ago. Now our results are much better, but I yeah, we'll show you maybe next time. Maybe Chen will share with you. Um, uh, still a uh, you know, kind of review. So, <clears throat> and we, we, so those what are meaning those numbers? Uh, it's a bit complicated. Well, we need to measure to some level of the precision uh, of this uh, match to the uh, reference uh, real human motion. Um, that we do, okay. Uh, basically, we what we I think the time is a uh, for just uh, we also measure this. Okay, uh, maybe I just mentioned in this way. I think I, I don't have much time left. And we also want to measure the diversity. I just put the name <laughs> diversity, but it has a formula for that. Uh, so these two actually are categorizing the same the same regime, categorizing the diversity of generic emotions. It cannot be always the same one. Uh, uh, actually, this three, now this two, this three, right? And, and this is uh, just borrowed from uh, the, the generative model uh, community. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, number shows we are doing not that, but uh, the specific uh, detail of those are, so those are actually like this one and this three, four of those um, so basically without FID are, Coming up uh, by by Chuan, okay, in, in his first uh, paper, I think it's in the CPR last year, and then he had the uh, ECCB last year, and uh, there are so far I think uh, hundred plus maybe two hundred papers follow up, and they all use this uh, metric so far. Not perfect, but something people follow at the moment. Okay, lots of defects, but uh, uh, that's what we can do. Um, and also we have a user study and uh, with numbers. <clears throat> Uh, which means actually uh, the color is, uh, you know, this is the real motion, okay? We want to be close and comparably, actually we are quite close. That's why we have, uh, that's observation here. So with, uh, I think I have only 15 minutes left. I will, um, I'll, I'll, I'll start by talking about second project, uh, maybe in about 10 minutes. So it, the work is done by Shi Hao and the, uh, it focused on, as I said, motion capture, uh, which the jargon, uh, what, what, what I mean is um, from a single input uh, uh, set of images captured by maybe different set of cameras, right? I think kind of to reconstruct a 3D human body shape. And those cameras, uh, now I need to talk about the cameras. Um, this is the work. This line of work has been around for many years. What's new here is we look at some new cameras, relatively new cameras. So to use, we are I believe the first to use the polarization camera to look at people, and as well as the so-called event camera. And so that's uh, actually show how it first. <clears throat> uh, so we start with uh, uh, you know uh, what we do. Okay, basically that's a setup. So Shu Hao spent a lot of time to uh, build up, you know, the, the motion capture setup. It's a lot of work, uh, hard to publish a paper on this, but uh, so, and, and we basically we buy a, a very cheap uh, consumer grade uh, cameras and we put them together and we write code to synchronize them. Uh, you know, basically we want at the same time as precise as possible, all the cameras will will capture the same image, right? You uh, you know, uh, 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 green buffer 
just hold one image at the same time, at one time, okay? And all is synchronized. Especially, we also need to uh, align the, you know, the images, such that uh, all those cameras, right? All those cameras have to be uh, specially calibrated. So that involves a 3D conservation, uh, where we need to know the camera intrinsic parameters, like the focal length, and the scaling factors uh, you know, to match the sensor uh, chip, right? We will have a similar sensor, uh, a, a unit uh, a length uh, to a, a pixel length, okay? So from, in a sense, from a millimeter, uh, let's say, centimeter, meter used to a pixel, right? Which pixel, that right? location, right? So all of these are internal intrinsic parameters we need to know. Camera calibration also involve, uh, we need to know the pose, uh, the orientation, the location of a particular camera. Because it's, uh, by the way, a camera is a rigid body object, remember, right? We have to start with. So that's, uh, we have all of those independent uh, individual rigid body objects in all their, their pose. Yeah. So calibration is done this. <clears throat> they are very expensive ones, but what we use is uh, <laughs> very low cost solution, okay? But still, you see the result actually not, not that bad. It's not perfect, but yeah, it's uh, reasonable. So. And we use this as well in our previous project. Okay? Have, uh, the Shihao is actually also helping some other, uh, I say, students in the lab. So some of the captured uh, <clears throat> three body shapes with the skeletal model. So remember, those are the drag um, and those uh, three body shapes. So with this setup, now we are able to uh, to do some work. Right? So um, then you know it's quite quite smooth actually. Turns out. <clears throat> so first work is to uh, deal with the so-called uh, polarization camera. So this is a uh, uh, I think time is limited. So rather than RGB color image have four, three channels, right, green, blue. Here a polarization image have four times single image. Okay, just a different polarization angle and the face. <clears throat> then from here, uh, the pipeline is two stages. Um, I'll just focus on the results in the time um, numbers. So those are the numbers we um, so we evaluate on different data sets. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll say the number the higher the better, okay? <laughs> it's simple. Uh, so this is the average drawing error, or you can call it the MP, uh, JPE, due to some reason, um, which is also, uh, this number is a smaller better class, smaller better. Um, yeah, so overall, we are doing quite well. And uh, just show you some of the results uh, and something. Uh, so the comparison with other methods, here's what we have with the input, right? And uh, we have some, uh, you know, showing like with the input, uh, single image, the reconstruction, and compare with others. <clears throat> um, so, so the capture, so the motion capture result, the 3D human body shape, uh, contains certain level of closing detail. Not perfect. You see some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, not always flat, right? right? Uh, uh, comparing to, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of those, I think, uh, showing above. Uh, so it's certainly not perfect, but, but uh, yeah, I, I won't have time to go into the other. But it actually it turns out to be quite challenging to want to capture fine detail, uh, clothing, uh, you know, human clothing in 3D. It's not an easy job. Uh, at this moment, it's still quite, quite a challenge. So what people usually do is they just stop at the capturing of a very uh, rough 3D shape okay, with very smooth body, like a naked uh, human body without clothes, right? If you put on a skirt, I say, it's very hard because it's, it's detached, right? It's very hard to capture that. <clears throat> and if you have, a, you know, some uh, something blow, right? And you see the, um, uh, the, the dynamics of, of, of your skirt or, you know, something which are, are, are not a part of your, your body or skin, right? Oh, sometimes you have a, 
um, let's say not very skinny, but uh, uh, let's say uh, more like a uh, uh, a built person <laughs> with a muscle deformation. It's also very hard to um, um, to capture things like that. So uh, I will briefly talk about this. Uh, I won't go into details. But event camera is a very uh, different uh, uh, camera model, uh, different beast. So uh, essentially, we are still able to do it in the sense that you see actually it's very sparse data. So it's an accumulation of, of the so-called events uh, over a, a period of time. That's all we observe. And we need to basically to, to create a 3D human body shape and with this, uh, you know, it's motion, it's movement, uh, only just from this. Oh, what does a single event look like? Yes. Uh, so far, so what a pixel. Like so yeah, event camera is um, different from the CMOS sensor, right? The image is actually yeah. that even on in that in a single uh, the single while, okay, of course, on a single pixel of that uh, sensor, I say, event camera sensor. You have uh, it on its own, like, you know, it's searching to do motion detector detection locally, only on that uh, wire of in the end on that pixel. Oh, yeah. Is this the instant derivative rather than the value function? Yeah, yeah, kind of, okay. kind of like that. Yeah, the, the effect is like a uh, first order, you know, uh, yeah. uh, derivative mm -hmm. uh, of the you know, of the, of the color value, just change the color. Is the second is the second events? Uh, set of well deltas from the first, or is it? Is it no, it's just uh, uh, it, it just the first one. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Thank you. And, and uh, the result is uh, quite different. So that's a new camera modality. Uh, now you, you, you Sony, um, Samsung, Omnivision, all the major chip and you know, imaging chip makers they start to do this. Uh, if you look around. Anyway, so we are, uh, I think, among the first to do this um, with the uh, two body human motion capture. <clears throat> and results are uh, quite good. So, a uh, paper published and the uh, journal version is still under uh, submission, under review. Um, um, I think uh, I still have uh, a little bit of time. So, um, but, but you get to see actually. That, that's basically all the data we have, right? We look at this, and uh, in the end, we need to reconstruct a 3D body shape, and it also needs to move, right? It's not a, a simple task. So one thing we are facing in the dilemma is, what if a body part doesn't move? You never get to see, right? So what we have to do is, OK, I haven't shown you, but I will show. We need to keep a first frame, free scale picture of that, uh, just as a complementary uh, set of uh, a signal, right? To the, the, the event stream, event, uh, you know, train events uh, as input. But now we are starting to, uh, uh, to let go of this uh, input, uh, single input, uh, uh scale image. Um, anyway, so it's a bit controversial. Um, but, yeah, and uh, and we still have some results, but uh, with the assumption that all the body parts have to move, otherwise you just you know finger movement, you can't get to see the face and other parts. <clears throat> so anyway, um, uh, more results. So yeah, those are the the, the events, right? Okay, I, I think I will just skip this part. Uh, we also work on this uh, you know, multi in the presence of multiple uh, individuals uh, interactions. Uh, you know, uh, so we're doing the tracking, uh, uh, future motion trajectory prediction, uh, those as well. But I just uh, quickly come to uh, the final third project done by uh, uh, Mahadia, and basically it's a score. Uh, the human motions. It's actually had a target called the action quality assessment uh, in the community. You know, we call this way, uh, and we only work on so far on the sports activities. So the ones I show here, 
actually are quite diverse in the sense those are just the uh, seconds long. You think about it, right? Human motion of sports uh, events. And uh, the skating, ice skating one, or figure skate one is a uh, minute long. So somehow we are able to learn a model, the same model we use. I can turn to the next page. Um, basically, uh, you know, to train on individual uh, sports, um, a different, uh, you know, individual sports, diving, so on. And then the, 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 the performance actually is not that bad. It works well across the board from those, you know, very fast uh, people to this, uh, uh, you know, a, a different camp, right? A very, very reasonably long, minutes long uh, event, motion events. Ideally, the, the work result can be used uh, as an uh, objective that evidence presented to let's uh, say the real human um, reference uh, referee, sorry, or uh, a coach right, to decide. And with this, I will conclude and uh, acknowledge uh, the, the the people who contribute. So Chuan Shihao, Mahadia, Doha, Xinxian, and also the funding agencies. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.